Hi everyone, it's me, Elna. I hope you can hear me because right now I'm gonna be talking about how you can use a quick LinkedIn hack to help you attract more clients, right? If you wanna get some freelance writing jobs as a new writer, all right? So if you're here, please say hi. After I do this hack, you can ask some questions because I'm gonna be doing a live Q&A. Hopefully if people come and meet me right now. Now, um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Elna and my blog is elnacane.com and I help freelance writers to find clients, get more money, and as well, how to become a freelance writer if you're brand new, right? All right, everyone. So let me just check and see if I'm live right now and then we can get started. Of course, I do want some people to come join me and ask me some questions if you're here. It is the middle of the day. So hopefully um, you can take a quick, I don't know, 20 minutes break from whatever you're doing and come say hi and come join me. Hi everyone. Oh, hey, Bonetta, you're here. Glad you're here. Thank you so much. And I love how when I do lives on my, my Facebook pages, I can see your name. So thank you so much for being here. So I take it that I am on the right page. I am live and you guys can hear me. So that's awesome. So what I want to talk to you about is using LinkedIn to attract uh, freelance writing jobs. Now, I hope everyone who is watching this has a LinkedIn profile. If you don't, that's one of the first steps you need to do is start getting that LinkedIn profile up. Hey, hey, Joe. Hey, I'm glad you're here. All right. So um, I've been playing around LinkedIn. I actually personally don't go on LinkedIn onto the platform very much now. Um, but when I was a brand new freelance writer, um, I did utilize that platform heavily and I was on the LinkedIn profile or platform um, almost every day um, trying to connect with brands and all that. So I'm not going to go over how to use LinkedIn to find clients. That's something that I'm going to actually do for my uh, course students in the Right to 1K course. I'm going to actually um, dive down into LinkedIn and do sort of a good video tutorial on how to use LinkedIn to attract clients. So, but I thought for today I could share a little quick hack that you can do and get started right now so that you can start attracting the right type of clients for you. All right. So let me just switch the, my view so you can see my uh, LinkedIn profile. So when you, when you get into LinkedIn or log into LinkedIn, you sort of have this um, home screen, right? Where all the people that you're following, you get to see any kind of um, posts that they're posting. Um, a lot of, I've been following a lot of freelance writers and freelance writers have been connecting with me as well. But it's, it's a great place to, of course, connect with uh, your potential clients. And one of the new things that LinkedIn has started, I mean, I guess it's not new. Um, it's probably been in effect for over a year now is that you can customize your own profiles, a uh, banner image. All right. And for the longest time, I just used a pretty image for my banner image, right? When you click on my profile, but I recently changed it to make it more optimized. So this is the hack that I'm sharing with you. And so maybe you can adopt it for your profile. So once you go and view my profile, you can see right here that I, I'm using this banner image to market my freelance writing business. So um, what I did specific to my niche, cause I write for digital, um, I write in the digital marketing niche for a lot of uh, digital like native brands, um, I thought I could share a little bit of some metrics to show sort of my influence or my credibility as a digital marketer. Not only do I write about it, but I um, have experience with marketing, right? So on this banner, I just put my name, I put a picture of me, and then um, I made sure to put the type of writer that I am. I put the link that they can find me. So the, my URL, I actually have two, so they can toot around on both of those sites. And then right here is where I show them my, my, my proof, my social proof, you know, that I have over 4,000 likes on Facebook, 6,000 followers on, on Twitter and over 32,000 followers on Pinterest. Now for someone that wants digital mar marketing um, type of writing content, they can look at this quickly and say, and see like, look, wow, she's a writer and She's really good at um, at digital marketing because I can see that she has grown a big followership. Now I could um, beef this up even more to put how many subscribers I have on my email list, how many 
page views I have on my blogs? How many blogs do I have? How many courses do I have? Like I can really beef this up and say, look, like I have the personal experience in digital marketing. I can help your business get you to that level or, or higher, right? So I feel like you can use this banner in whatever niche that you're in. If you're a pet writer, if you are a food writer, if you write about safety, management protocols, um, things like that, you can um, optimize your banner by putting um, a little picture, either of you or a picture of a computer, and then putting um, your information on it. Hey, Joe. Um, oh, hey, hey, Beverly, I'm glad you guys are here. I'm going to be answering questions just a little bit later. I'm going to show you quickly how you can create this banner or a type of banner for LinkedIn. So what I like to use is a free, um, a free editing photo editor, <laughs> free image editor, I guess it's called. It's called Canva. So um, you can just put in your social media profile and you can get quickly onto Canva. You can just uh, type in LinkedIn. And it says right here, LinkedIn banner. So you just click on that and you can create a new banner quickly. So um, you can use the templates that they have here if you want. So Canva gives you some free templates to use. Um, I personally like to be um, more personal, more unique and do my own type of banner. But there are some nice ones here, like this one has, you know, like a typewriter behind it. It's kind of dark, but that's, you know, something to think about, like when you're whatever type of uh, writer and what kind of brands you want to attract, you know, maybe if, like in the gaming industry, dark is good, right? In the gaming industry. Um, something like this is more pop. It's more colorful. It's more bright. Um, so you can definitely use something like this if you want. And in here, you can just write, you know, your name, you know, Emily... Did I say Emily? Emily, Emily Baker, you know, and then she can put whatever writer she is. This reminds me of a food writer, you know, for magazines. Um, and then she can put her um, metrics here. She can put her URL, her contact information, something like that. One thing you need to remember is that on LinkedIn, you're going to have your little image right here on the side. So you don't want to put all your best information down in this corner. You want to move it over on this side. Okay, so... Um, that's something that I would do and then you would just download it and then um, upload it. You can just click on the pencil icon here and then you can um, customize it right here with this, with this one right here. And then you can drop in your photo. And even here you can um, change a little bit of things if you want, um, add filters and things like that, which I personally don't do. So no thanks. Oops, discard. Okay, so I just um, uploaded this image two days ago and I'm going to um, follow a bit more brands. I'm going to sort of connect with them and see if this helps with, um, with them trusting me more and then um, maybe reaching out to me it, quicker, all right? So this is sort of a case study that I'm doing and then all the results that I'm gonna have, I'm gonna put in my course, right, right to your first 1K as a lesson for my course students so they can start doing this. But I really wanted to show you this quickly because I think this is a quick hack that you guys can do and get started with. All right, so there you go. Hey everyone, I'm glad you're here. So Joe, um, asks, would you recommend creating a customized banner image with a personal picture as you have? Yeah, you know, I would give it a try. Um, it does show nicely. I mean, I just put my picture up there because I don't know, I just wanted to. <laughs> but um, you can definitely just put a um, what I showed you in the Canva tutorial, just a block, a colored block with your name if you want and try that. You can do some A-B testing and see. Um, what I want you to focus on is uh, making sure that they can clearly see your name, they can clearly see the type of writer that you are, and they can clearly see how to contact you. Those are the three important things that you need to leverage on this banner. And then from there, depending on the type of writer that you are, um, show whatever metrics that are, are great. Maybe you want to show where you've been featured. So maybe as a food writer, there are some top food magazines, you know, that you've been featured on, and then you can quickly put that on that banner. Right. These are the little things that that prospects can land on your profile and quickly see that and make that connection faster. 
Hey, Beverly, all good stuff. I do workshops on the power of LinkedIn. That's great, Beverly. Good to know. Awesome. That's great. All right. Now, and if anyone has any questions about me about freelance writing, you can ask them if you want. It's up to you for sure. Um, I'm here for a little bit. I'm going to be picking up my twins a little bit later in about three o'clock. So I can hang around if you guys have any questions regarding LinkedIn or marketing or freelance writing or even blogging and writing. I'm here for you, right? So um, let me know how you find LinkedIn. If you find that this new platform and what they're doing on LinkedIn is helping you attract leads, let me know. Um, like I said, I haven't been utilizing LinkedIn as much just because I've been getting a lot of um, lead generation um, strategy for my blogs already. So I get clients coming to me from my website, right? So, but you can't knock this type of, um, marketing for your business, especially on LinkedIn, since that's the number one professional, like social media profile out there. But, um, I'm sure there are people that can grab freelance writing clients on Instagram, on Twitter for sure. Um, and even on Facebook, right? So there are different methods you can use on different social media profiles. For sure. All right, everyone. So if you guys have any questions, just pop them in. I'm just going to take a quick drink. Oh, I haven't had my coffee yet. I got to have that before I go pick up my twins. Ooh. Okay. Joe asks, I think, yeah, he has a question. Being a technical co a copywriter, I'm learning as I go. You offered me to use ProBlogger and other sites to get leads. Any other ideas? Yeah, um, there are lots of different freelance writing jobs, boards, sorry, freelance writing job boards that you can use um, as a beginner. They're free. So um, I believe my top recommendations are ProBlogger. So ProBlogger has an extensive um, page with jobs. So I would peruse this every day, twice a day to see if there's any new leads you can um, definitely type in your, I don't know, tech would be your technology. So expert tech and healthcare writer, that's ghost, that's ghost writing. So that might be profitable, but it's going to be hard to build your profo portfolio that way. Um, tech product review writer, reviews might be a little bit low pain, but again, if it's in your niche and those are easy to write, then you can grab that, uh, that gig as a way to build credibility in that topic. Um, yeah, so pro blogger is great. Freelance writing, um, blogging pro is one I don't talk about often, but they do have some, um, some good gigs. So if you go to blogging pro, it's the same concept. You can just type in tech. And then you can see there's one right here, freelance tech review writer. I didn't even see that. So um, you can visit dot dash um, tech writers at Bustle Digital Group. And you know what's so neat is that you can go and then you can see if they're on LinkedIn, right? And you can connect with them on that platform too. So there's some great ways you can um, find clients in different job boards and then try to do some warm pitching because that's sort of what my, my shtick is, warm pitching versus cold pitching. I think it's more converting to do some warm pitching and get some kind of um, relationship building or networking potential. Um, so yeah, so those are the um, the two. And then, yeah, freelance writing, Blogging Pro and Pro, Pro Blogger are some good job boards that I would try out first and um, check them regularly and um, send your pitch to them. Make sure that you have all the good um, things in your pitch as far as... Um, a link to your website, to your portfolio, um, how you do your writing, what you offer as your writing, um, things like that. So, and if you need help writing a cover letter, if that, if that job ad asks for cover letter, I did write a post recently, which I am happy and excited about on my blog on how to write a cover letter. So take a look at that. Um, I'll drop the link in here. So yeah, this is a, a breakdown on how, um, why some job ads, you know, ask for cover letters, how you can write your cover letter as a freelance writer. Um, personally, I haven't done this, um, but I know that there are job ads that are asking for that more and more these days, right? So you wanna be ahead of the game, you wanna be prepared. So I would even like draft up a copy, a cover letter to have just in case, right? So 
that's something to consider as well. All right, everyone. Is there any more questions that you have? I'm glad you guys are here. Um, this is exciting. Like, it's a new month, so which is great because that could mean a boost in, in getting more gigs, more clients um, for their content marketing strategy. Um, you know, I find that the every new month or every new quarter, you can see a boost in getting those leads to your inbox. Um, so use that as motivation to start pitching more and um, attracting those clients to your website. All right. What do you recommend adding to a pitch if you don't have a website or blog yet? Um, that's a good question, Bonetta. What I suggest is, let's see what I can show you. Do you have a um, Contently profile? Because um, if you don't have a site up, you can add your uh, samples on to Contently. And Contently is a well-known um, platform to show your portfolio or to show your samples. So I have this page and I have my projects that I just uploaded, right? You can upload um, PDFs. So if you have print, like a magazine article, scan that and then you can upload the to Contently. All right, so you can you can try that. Um, yeah, I think this is a great, and you can just add this link to all your pitches. You know, you can view my samples here. Um, and if you need uh, to see more about my work, then maybe add a link to your LinkedIn profile. That's also another way, another handy way to um, tell people who you are. So it will show where you've been working um, that's related to your freelance writing, right? If you have some um, maybe guest posts, you can even add guest posts on here on your uh, LinkedIn profile. I would add a guest post if that's all you have, right? So that might be a good, a good way to um, build that trust with that person if you don't have your writer website right away. Did you also say samples too? Let me see. Oh. Um, okay, if you don't have a website, yeah. Yeah, so use Contently. I would use Contently and then maybe um, pair that with your LinkedIn profile. So if you could optimize both of those, those uh, pages, then hopefully you can start landing gigs and then um, get some income and then you can start creating that to write a website because in the long run, your writer website is what's gonna be the lead generation um, strategy to capture all those uh, great clients. All right, everyone. Well, I'm glad you're here. Oh, thanks, Joe. <laughs> I'm glad you like that idea. Yeah, I like Contently. And you know what? Even though I have a writer website, I still use Contently. I have other, um, Clear Voice is another place you can put your portfolio on Clear Voice. Um, I can show you that real quick. Clear Voice is a nice um, platform because you can actually get uh, gigs on Clear Voice. Oh, I can't spell this. Um, let me just search for, here I am. So on Clear Voice, I have a, a portfolio on Clear Voice as well. So, and this is all free. Just sign up on Clear Voice. Um, they ask you your rate. They ask you that, I think the type of clients or the your niche, and then you can upload your content right here. So I have my content all here for, for uh, prospects. And then you get emails when people um, want to hire you. So it's a nice platform. Um, hi, hey, Tish, what is the most important thing as for the author website? Okay, so you want to do more fiction writing, right? Is that what you're asking me, Tish? Um, you know, Alicia Raids is, or used to be a freelance writer, and now is a well known writer. Let me see if I can find her. No. I'm just gonna put her name, <laughs> Alicia, here. Yeah, how does a beginning freelance writer decide to charge? Okay, yes, I'm a fiction writer. Okay, so fiction writing, I'm not too, um, 
knowledgeable about fiction writing as a freelance writer. Um, I do know about like the fiction writing part um, is a whole different industry for marketing your books. Um, oh, wow. She even has a fan Facebook group. So like I would go and, and go on to Alicia Raid's uh, website to look at how she um, um, connects. She does a lot of social media marketing. So with her fiction writing, um, I know in November they do the whole um, November writing month, nano something. I'm not quite sure what it's called. Um, but I feel um, I don't know many f- freelance writers that do fiction writing. They do. I know some that do ghost writing for books. So maybe that's something that you're interested in doing. Sorry, this is um, annoying. Um, a little bit distracting, not annoying. <laughs> Um, so you might want to do that. And then you ask, how does a beginner freelance writer decide or decide to charge? Um, I tell a lot of my course students to start their, uh, writing at 10 cents a word, excuse me. So between 10 and 15 cents a word, you can set your, your base writing rate at that. Um, pick up a couple of clients and then you can start increasing your rate to um, what you feel is worth your um, your writing and how you can live comfortably with that that rate. Yes, you know that, Tish, right? Nano Rimo or how you say that for real. <laughs> yeah, I've heard about that. So um, I've never done that because, I mean, fiction writing is not my thing, but it seems pretty fun. I feel like there's a lot of... Um, a lot of people talking about it and trending. And so that's something that you can get noticed on Twitter, especially, and even on Facebook. Um, and then I know that there might be some publications. So publications that you can write on. Um, I don't know if it's all business or all nonfiction. So like someone like All Freelance Writing has a submission section on her site. So let me see if I can find it. Do, 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 do. The writer directory, is that what it is? This submission? No, this is writers. You can um you can post your profile here. That's a nice way. I think you I think you have to pay for it. Um do, 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 do. markets. I think it's in markets. Yes. So under here are a whole bunch of um places you can submit your um stories and so there might be some uh, places for fiction writing I don't know a lot of these seem to be non-fiction though but there might there they might there might be so I'm gonna link or I'm gonna drop that link for you Tish so take a look at that oops okay Joe says, I'm doing ghostwriting for an author, okay, who uses Kindle to sell her children book, which we work together to publish on Amazon. Yeah, so that's, um, ghostwriting is a great, a great way to uh, break into that sort of fiction writing to help um, authors with their ideas and stuff. So I actually have a uh, blog post on that too, if you need some help with marketing your ghostwriting services, because that's kind of hard when you can't tell anyone what you do. Um, sorry, I'm just dropping links for you right now, but I feel like I'm on a time crunch. So I just want to put it out there so that you can read it later if you want. All right. Yeah, she pays me hourly for three to four hours. Great. That's awesome. That's great, Joe. Um, so yeah, that's, that's definitely an avenue to pursue Tish, um, is connecting with all those authors and then letting them know about your service. Good, good. I'm glad this is all helpful for you. I am just learning about all this whole like fiction writing aspect and then how to um, find clients that way. It's, and also finding clients with like, um, like hobbies, like the hobbies that you have or interests. I mean, a lot of writers that email me are interested in history. They're interested in art. They're interested in a lot of those types of niches. And so I'm I'm working hard at finding ways that they can find clients. And I actually did a lesson on that. So um, I feel like that will hopefully help them find the right type of client for them. 
Tish, I have a book out. Great. I'm writing my second book. Just trying to find a way to write full time. That's awesome. Um, see if you can connect with Alicia Rays. She's popular on, on Facebook. You can find her on Facebook and then um, maybe sign up to her email list to get to know how she does her marketing. Um, I know she's a USA bestseller, so she's really proud of that. So um, she's a, a great person to connect with. All right, everyone, I'm just going to be here for another few minutes. So if you have any more questions, just drop them in. I still have to have my coffee before I go pick up my twins. And my hair is a little bit crazy today. It's been really cold where I've, I, I am. It's like minus 25. So it's not doing really well for my hair, this dry weather. All right. <laughs> I hope you guys are um, in a less colder place than I am. Vanetta, hey, have you ever worked on Fiverr? I heard this was a great way to get started writing. No, I personally haven't worked on Fiverr and I personally wouldn't use or suggest using Fiverr as um, a writer. I believe that's a platform that you only get paid, what, $5 or something? Is that the one? Um, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't, I don't advise writers to use Upwork. I don't advise writers to use those freelance marketplaces personally. I found much better success uh, with my own writer website and using job boards. Definitely, definitely. Um, oh, Tish, four inches of snow. Yeah, it's not snowing yet, but I do have a boatload of snow everywhere. So <laughs> I've been seeing a lot of neighbors uh, shoveling their roofs because it's slowly melting. And so I'm kind of worried about that now. So like I go to bed worried that the like, our roof is going to cave in. <laughs> it's an irrational thought for sure. Yeah, yeah. Bonetta, I would, um, like I suggest to Tish, the starting rate, start your rate at 10 cents. Start there. Start there. Um, you will land gigs. if you, you, you will attract the right clients by putting out on the internet your worth and your value. All right? So you believe in it and, it, and you will get those, um, those right clients for you. Um, Joe, I'm going to go over your prior email you sent me. Oh, okay. Don't feel jealous of me being in Florida. Wow, you're in Florida. That's great. <laughs> yeah, I'm currently living up in Canada. I used to, I grew up in California, actually. And then when I went to university, I went to Canada, to Vancouver. Now I moved all the way to Ontario now. So we've been here for a while. So it's been great. <laughs> all right, everyone. Um, thank you for coming. So I'm going to let you go. If you guys have any more questions, just pop them in. I will add or I'll answer them later in the day. All right. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me. And I hope that the LinkedIn hack um, will help you. So go ahead and start working on those LinkedIn header banners. All right. Talk to you guys later.